just a uh, FUSE webinar uh, Wednesday session. Um, today's session will be focused on a debrief from the 2016 Computational Science Symposium, which occurred in uh, March of this year. So today we have um, the working group co-leads here to give you an overview of what their activities were during the session. And um, I'm here in place of uh, Chris Decker to provide a little bit of an overview of the CSS itself. And then I'll come back at the end and talk to um, a CSS event that we're going to be running in Europe this year in, in June. Uh, we'll be run in Basel, and I'll give you some bit, a bit more information on that. Um, so before we get started, I just want to kind of go through a few housekeeping details. Um, the webinar, as you may have heard, is being recorded. So if you have colleagues that were unable to attend today, the recording will be posted uh, to the few, or a link to the recording will be posted to the FUSE website within the next week or so after the session ends. Additionally, um, all uh, attendees are on mute, so if you do have a question, please type it into the uh, GoToWebinar uh, functionality, and we'll address the questions at the end of the session if we have time. If we don't have time to get to your question, we will follow up offline and post the uh, answers to those questions um, on the FUSE website as well. So without any further ado, I am just going to jump in and give you a quick overview of uh, what happened at this year's uh, 2016 CSS. And then, like I said, I'll hand off to the working group's colleagues for, for the more uh, pertinent information. Uh, as most of you are probably aware, um, and if you're not, this is just a quick review. So the Computational Science Symposium was really um, founded around kind of new ways of working. So I know that we typically attend conferences, and there's a lot of great uh, speakers that we hear presenting on their experiences, um, you know, uh, within industry or within the regulatory space. So with the Computational Science Symposium, it was really about, instead of having a, a speaker-driven uh, meeting, it was really about getting people around the table from all aspects of the industry and, and regulatory spaces to kind of solve different problems that we may be experiencing. So we have, you know, folks from regulatory agencies like the FDA or uh, PMDA. We have um, standards development organizations like CDIS that are involved. And then people from sponsor companies, um, CROs, as well as uh, technology providers and academia, all kind of supporting uh, this effort to kind of solve problems and, and make things uh, a bit better in our, in our daily lives. So this is really the mission. Again, I know a lot of you have seen these slides before, the mission of the computational science collaboration, which is really the overarching um, entity that puts on the CSS as well as kind of uh, oversees the working group. So the collaboration is really about providing a transparent, non-competitive forum where we can all come together and, like I said, solve problems that uh, we are having in, in, in the industry or the regulatory uh, spaces. So the, the collaboration itself is, is made up of the working groups, which, like I mentioned, we'll be hearing from each of the working group co-leads uh, later this morning, as well as a symposium. So hopefully um, you had an opportunity to attend the symposium in March, and if not, like I said, we are actually running an event in Europe, which I'll come back and talk to you a little bit later in the session. So currently we do have um, five working groups, the uh, Optimizing Use of Data Standards, Semantic Technology, uh, Emerging Trends in Technology, so Standard Scripts, and uh, the non-clinical working group, which I believe this slide is now out of date, as they, I think, are changing their name. But Sue DeHaven is on from that working group and can give you more information. So we are currently running over 30 active projects. And um, as you'll see in the FUSE monthly mail shot, which should be out early next week, we have uh, three to five new projects which we'll be starting. So we're really excited uh, about that. So just in terms of a high-level overview of the 2016 CSS, uh, this year, again, the event was sold out. We had over 300 attendees uh, to the event, and uh, probably about a third of those attendees uh, were new attendees to the event. We had over 50 FDA attendees to the, to the 2016 uh, CSS, and for the first time, we had two folks from PMDA uh, attend the, the CSS, and we had actually a lot of good engagement with those two folks to kind of get a better idea of how the uh, computational science collaboration can assist with some of the uh, ongoing PMDA uh, efforts. So if you were, were there through the end of the meeting, there was a really lively panel discussion um, between uh, with FDA industry as well as CDIS was on that panel about the next generation uh, regulatory review environment as well as next generation data standards. Uh, we had a uh, workshop that we ran at the beginning of the event on that Sunday night, a Semantics 101 workshop for pharma. We originally had 
um, slated to have 30 people attend that event and actually 60 people showed up for it. So it was really well attended, it was very well received. And again, we're actually going to be uh, running that again at the Basel CSS. Uh, food always comes up in the in the kind of summary survey. So everybody seems to enjoy the food at the CSS. So I, I guess if you didn't attend next year and you're looking for a, another reason to attend in 2017, um, good food is an option. Um, and again, networking is a great opportunity to kind of get together with folks that you may not um, see on a daily basis and kind of touch base and, and get engaged. So. We had um, something new at uh, this year's CSS. We had, we had some, some survey functionality that we were uh, running throughout the course of a, a few different presentations. And during uh, the wrap-up of the event, we had uh, this question uh, offered to the audience. And as you notice, a lot of people um, said that they would actually get engaged in a uh, project after the CSS. So we're hoping by continuing with these webinars, continuing to uh, to keep uh, the collaboration in, in your conscious that you'll, you'll get involved and you'll make a difference. And we also had a, a question around what was kind of the major theme for the CSS. And we were really encouraged to see that um, if you look at this word cloud, that collaboration was really the primary um, uh, word or primary theme that came up with a lot of people. I noticed that Doritos and Guinness are on there as well, and I'm not really exactly sure what the, that is trying to tell us, but collaboration, and that's really the key to the um, you know, computational science collaboration and, and these working groups. So I am just gonna step away and kind of turn this over to the really kind of the meat of the presentation. This is where the working group co-leads are kind of give you a debrief of what happened within each working group at the 2016 meeting and what they're looking uh, forward to doing within the next year. So I'm now going to turn the uh, presentation over to Tim Williams, who is the co-lead for the Semantic Technologies Working Group. So Tim, I'll be giving the presentation right here to you. Thanks a lot, Scott. I'll just bring up my presentation here. and Perhaps you can let me know uh, when and if you see the screen. Perfect. Looks good, Tim. Great. Well, thank you very much. And thanks for the handoff there. We did have a very successful CSS conference this year within the Semantic Technology Working Groups. And I'll provide a group-by-group -group summary. But first, starting with the semantics for pharma, as mentioned by Scott there. And I'm going to go with his estimate of over 60 attendees, because that sounds more impressive than my count of over 50. Uh, we did have a lot of people show up on a Sunday evening to talk about linked data and the semantic web and implications for pharma. And it also gave the attendees a, some basis or, or grounding for participation in one of the many semantic technology projects, some of which I will go over today. This is an up-and-coming technology for pharma. I think it's going to be really a big thing in the future and uh, very important for us to get up to speed on. There will be future offering, offerings of the workshop both of the few CSS EU, as mentioned, and that will be uh, provided by my colleague, Mark Anderson. And then both Mark and I will also give the workshop again at the annual conference in Barcelona. So we hope to see you there uh, for an introduction into this technology. Some of the groups here, the first one, I will start off with the one that is led by Mark and me, the analysis results and metadata group. We've slated our project deliverables for June of this year. So we will be wrapping up this aspect of the project before we move on to new things. And those deliverables will include a white paper, the RDF data cube model technical specification, and an R package that will allow you to convert analysis results and metadata into the RDF data cube model. We are collaborating a lot with the standard scripts and use cases group. I'll mention use cases in a moment. And I think this was a really good theme from this year's conference. We had a lot more cross-group interaction and collaboration. So we're really starting to come together at this conference in our initiatives. So for example, the standard strip, scripts group will be hosting the R package on their GitHub uh, as a subfolder there. And we will also be looking at working with their code base and data to develop use cases for our data cubes and other aspects of the semantic technology. Our plans for 2016 include looking at developing some use cases from the clinical data review template. And this was suggested from FDA input during one of our breakout sessions. So we had some really good feedback from the FDA. And very important, too, that we look into what they are also interested in. And I think that will then lead us into the next item here, which is cloud solution. We're very interested in providing some of this technology on the cloud. And that will service various aspects, the first of which will be 
development so we can collaborate across working groups and have a common platform. It will also facilitate things like training and the workshops, but also give us a demonstration area. So if we develop a concept or want to bet something through a wider audience and with someone like the FDA, we could have them come onto the cloud, investigate what we've done, and provide us with some feedback and direction. So I think that's a very important aspect that we are looking into in the FUSE organization. The next project, clinical program design, and this is led by Mary and Laszlo. They focus very much on their white paper, and its review and development. So looking at some of the original suggestions, the tool use for the design, and also including areas from other industries, which I thought was very good and reviewing sections of detailed uh, comments from the white paper and adding their early experiences with some of the design tools. So this will all lead up to finishing up the white paper ongoing now, sending it to FUSE for review by July 1st, and then from that point forward looking at some of the tool development, including things like uh, mapping of concepts and also Neo4j, which I should mention is it's an up-and-coming properties graph that we, a number of us this medic technology field have an interest in how we can best apply that in terms of our early data initiatives. We're also building out some instructional materials for these tools and validating the notes for the design activities. If you have any questions about any of these particular projects, please contact the co-leads, or if you'd like more information generally about what we're doing, you can also contact me. Regulations to RDF, this is led by Mitra. Their product deliverables include the Keywords extracted from 21 CFR and, of course, reviewed by FDA, CEDAR, and OSI. They have web-based search for 21 CFR, which I think is very interesting. And again, a mapping of the representations from two 21 CFR sections. Their plans for 2016 include interactive domain expert review tool for these keywords, and then linkages of 21 CFR to relevant guidelines and regulations, including from other health authorities and geographic locations. And they're also looking at change management and version control, two very important aspects. And again, a common interest here in cloud storage for access. And lastly, the one that I'll cover here, use cases for linked data. To me, I think this is a really key project because it helps link up the various aspects of linked data throughout the clinical trials data lifecycle. So this was kicked off at the CSS with Scott and Christine being the co-leads here. And we started collecting some of the use cases, and they were very active in, in terms of coming across projects to develop those use cases. And collaborating here with optimizing use of data standards for additional use cases. Plans for 2016 include two to three virtual roundtables, collating those use cases that are coming together and drafting a white paper, or perhaps a proof of concept uh, development there. So again, if you want uh, more information or would like to join this, uh, please contact Scott or Christine. And uh, do consider joining one of these projects or keeping an eye on this technology. We hope to see you at the upcoming conferences. And uh, yeah, that's it from my side. So now I need to hand off here. You'll bear with me for a moment. We will change presenters to Mary. Mary, I'm handing off to you. OK, do you hear me? I do. OK, that's good. Slides up. See your screen. All right. All right. Great. Thanks. All right. So I'll speak on behalf of the Development of Standard Scripts for Analysis and Programming Working Group. And the first few slides are the slides we show, I guess, at the beginning of every presentation, just to remind people what our working group is all about. So we do have one project team that's focusing on filling the gap of analysis standards. So while there's been a lot of work through collection and observed data sets and analysis data sets, we're working on the end part to develop some best practices with respect to tables, figures, and listings. And we have three project teams all related to the development, governance, maintenance of a shared reusable code library or the script repository. And the vision for this repository is to have a place where people can share code, where everybody contributes to, toward it and then can be, benefit from it. And the short-term goal, and this is how it relates to the, the previous project team, is to actually create some scripts associated with the, 
white papers that will outline some best best practices with respect to table figures and listings and get some code associated with that and have that be included in the repository. And we're also looking for existing scripts and the short term goal on that one is to, we are working with the FDA and receiving some scripts that are part of their Jumpstart program and we are receiving those and those are going into this repository as well. Um, the vision for this repository is quite broad though, so our short term goals have been a bit narrow, but the vision for the repository is quite broad. So we've had these same focus areas, the analysis and display white papers, the script repository, and the communication associated around these have been our focus areas pretty much right from the start of our working group. Um, last year at the CSS, we did tweak the names of our, our project teams. This year, we kept those the same. Um, we did have some changes in our project leads, so thank you for our past project leads. We had Dirk. Addy, IU, Dante, I'll, I'll um, step down this year, although I'm sure they're still going to stay involved, just not in the project lead capacity, and we did have some volunteers to help fill those gaps, so we're happy about that, so welcome to Jared, Wendy, Rebecca, Gustav, all stepped in to help with these project lead roles. So what we did at the CSS, we did host a GitHub workshop. So in past symposiums, those were the scriptathons. So we that's been rebranded to a GitHub workshop. And that's more for getting people used to the environment and get a chance to practice with it with people who can can help. And and we had about 20 participants, I believe. And the exercises that were done at that workshop are available for people who couldn't attend. And as already mentioned by Tim, we did have a meeting with the analysis results and metadata project team. So I agree that with the theme of this year's symposium, there's been a lot more cross group initiatives to actually work together and improve some of those collaborations. And Dante is offered to fill in and to be the liaison with this group for us. And so, you know, even though he stepped down as a project lead, he's still going to be quite involved with this relationship. And our, the three projects involved with the repository met um, together in breakout sessions, and the white paper project team met together in breakout sessions. And this was a good portion of the time, actually. So the repository group was able to make a lot of progress on you know, having some discussions related to the qualification process. I reviewed the scripts that were received from the FDA that's part of their Jumpstart service, they, so that was reviewed and, that, and we did receive some scripts from the FDA just prior to the symposium, so a lot of work was done to get that added to the, the script repository. There was a review of the index page and discuss, more discussions related to naming conventions and version control and a lot of discussions related to refining the goals and how best to make progress in this space. The white papers breakout session went very well as, as well and we talked a lot about displays associated with adverse events, hepatotoxicity and questionnaire data were the focus of this year's discussions. And we had amazing representation from the FDA on this. We had um, several medical representatives that helped with these discussions, which was very, very valuable. So our next steps are going to be just continue, continue our efforts toward these goals. And there's, there's going to be work toward moving some scripts through the whole process all the way through the qualification process. Can be work related to developing code that will start with these analysis result metadata, metadata as opposed to starting with SDTM and Atom, although that having code starting with SDTM and Atom is still part of the vision and, and still within scope, but moving toward in, including scripts that would start with the analysis data cube. And, and we'll certainly continue discussion to refine the goals and how to develop a working model to to make progress a little bit more efficiently. For the white paper project team, we now have five white papers that have been finalized. The thorough QT white paper was finalized just prior to the symposium, and that was the fifth white paper. And so the coming year, our next steps are to work on the next four. So this 
this would complete the, the plan. We have nine white papers in the plan. We'll certainly entertain additional white papers, and I imagine that will likely occur, that we will have ideas for additional white papers. And it's also within scope to go back to the final white papers that we have and work on version twos of those white papers. And that, so that's within the scope of our project team. And some of the work on the later versions will be to continue to improve visualization efforts and, and also work toward improving what displays might be best for interactive capabilities as opposed to static tables. So our vision for our version twos of our white papers to, or to improve some of that type of advice, what's best for interactive capabilities versus static displays. And we'll continue to work on communication, promotion, and education. So while we have a lot of work completed, we know there's still a lot of people out there that don't know about the work. So it's all related to socializing the deliverables, which is a common theme across all of our working groups, is how to improve you know, the use of these great work products. There's also an idea that we might have a webinar that's completely focused on the scripts that we have received from the FDA that's part of their Jumpstart service. We have thoughts about a few new projects. None of these have gone, have been submitted yet to the steering committee, but just to give people an idea of some of the thoughts is we might consider a project team that's very specific to for that in-between step between the white papers that give recommended displays and, and what's needed to actually create some reusable code that would be put into the script repository. The specifications associated with that might become its own project team. And there is a need to have more and better test data that could that we would be able to use. So some of the test data that's existing now may not have all the variables that would be needed to create the displays that we recommend in the white paper. So there, there is a need for a group that could perhaps work on some test data. And the white papers project team has identified a gap that, you know, we're a little limited on how to standardize some displays when the collection instructions for some very common and basic data vary greatly across companies right now. And so there's a thought we might want a project team looking at some best practices for the collection of things such as adverse events, medications, and disposition. And I think that's it. I will pass that to Sue. Okay, thanks, Mary. everyone see my screen? That looks good. Great, thank you. Um, okay, so Scott's right. The non-clinical working group is thinking about changing our name. Uh, we haven't formalized that through the steering committee yet, but uh, that's uh, a vote that we took at the CSS. Um, our topics are um, broadly spanning quite a lot of uh, what's going on across the few FDA collaboration, and we wanted to broaden our name a little bit, so and and also shorten it in writing. So uh, we are the Non-Clinical Topics Working Group, uh, co-led by myself and Bob Dorsum. What I'll say ahead of time is this presentation is heavy with links to all of the uh, deliverables and places to get information uh, about our working group. Um, that's just to help you find your way to us. Um, at, at, in the future, as I'm sure Scott will be posting this uh, webinar out onto the FUSE internet. Um, so the CSS for 2016 for the non-clinical working group this year, we just had some great outcomes. Um, our breakout group attendance was um, also very high uh, and, and diverse across both regulatory agencies, uh, pharma sponsors, CROs, and uh, software vendors. So we really had a nice cohort of people. Um, now out of that, nine project teams uh, will go forward into the coming year uh, to find answers to what we felt were our highest priority data challenges. Um, the highlights for us are uh, one of the one of our project posters won the collaboration poster award, and so there's a link to that poster for the non-clinical study data reviewers guide. 
Um, we also had a presentation of a great survey that was done for the assessment of the current state of send readiness in the industry. And uh, I'll show you a few uh, picture of a few of those uh, outcome slides. And there was a decision at the CSF to continue that survey uh, to be an annual event, uh, at least into the near future. And we had extensive discussions on data visualization and analysis. So um, really following on to uh, what um, Mary's group is doing, um, I think the non-clinical group is going to be collaborating with them quite a lot in the coming year on that topic. Um, so nine project teams. Uh, I think everyone, uh, uh, the food has certainly fueled the non-clinical working group at the CSS this year. Everybody was really motivated. Um, and we ended up with enough people to fund nine, or to resource, nine projects uh, for the coming year. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a big mandate, and um, we're all very excited about it. Um, first and foremost, I think, in popularity this year was the SEND Implementation User Group. Um, that's been a, a project team that's been ongoing for several years. Uh, in fact, I think since our first CSS. Um, and they are, are certainly going to continue. Every year we turbocharge that a little bit. Um, this year there's be a collaboration with the SCTM Adam FAQ group that, um, that's also being formed. And um, in that group we have we give send expert advice on frequently asked questions. Um, and there's a non-competitive discussion forum uh, on questions about send implementation. Uh, and the co-leads are Troy and Deborah. And all the co-leads are hyperlinked to their email if you'd like to contact them and find out more or join us. Um, the non-clinical SDRG team is continuing. Uh, just before the CSS, we had a Federal Register notice released. Uh, that's coming to comment end uh, on Monday, I believe. But there's still time to comment. Uh, so we were staying in, uh, in project uh, to support the review of that, and then finally the decisions on how to maintain that formally on the FUSE wiki. Um, the third project, this is the SEND implementation status survey that I spoke of a little bit earlier. This was really a highlight of our, of our CSS this year. Um, we've had a lot of attendance. The full survey results are posted on, uh, on our wiki site. The link to it is there. And you can see in these two, um, somewhat of a summary on the send readiness across industry um, based on the different tasks that we see. And um, what our goal is is that over the next few years we contribute to help the meter for where we all want to be be at 100% for, for everyone, uh, for every type of task. Um, you can see that people are readier for the earlier tasks and you know, having included a send data set in an IND or NDA, that's the ultimate goal for everyone. Um, so George Calbon and Kramer will uh, continue to uh, sponsor that activity. Um, they may refine the survey a bit this year, and then we'll look for another one before the next CSS. Um, and then we have two new projects related to send implementation. Um, really driven around the status of uh, concerns in the industry and also the need to really become operational about submission. Uh, so there's a new project, Data Consistency, uh, to investigate really the concerns or the topics around differences between send data sets and the final report. Um, and then develop solutions on how we're going about fixing them um, or addressing them in some way. Uh, this is really open for more participation. Um, Maria franco Macaro from Merck and Fred Wood from Accenture are ably leading that project. Um, the next one is really a sub-project of the SEND implementation user group, which is a test submission forum. Both FDA and industry are really interested in having this test submission process be useful and, um, and help everyone get to where they need to be for a test submission. Um, so FDA is really contributing um, resources and, and, um, and advice in that area. Um, Dave Epstein is participating from FDA and Kathy Brown from Sanofi uh, to help identify any barriers associated with completing test submissions and uh, demystify it in some way. 
Um, and so that's going on. They're developing a, a survey as well and uh, already getting back some good information. So again, any participation uh, people want to contribute to that are welcome. So the, um, the, the remaining four projects uh, are really less um, directed at the topic of implementation of SEND capability, but how to use it, um, how to leverage it. And we have the application for SEND data for analysis. Um, this is a project that you know, starts to use SEND data um, in ways that fit for either existing analyses or new ones, and, and they're doing quite an interesting survey across um, pharmas and vendors on what kinds of tables are available um, and which are maybe the, the best practice, um, and then domain by domain to help to add to that. Uh, they <clears throat> will be working collaboratively with the next group, um, the non-clinical scripts assessment group, who are going to de explore development of analysis scripts to query send data very much in the way that um, the development of standard scripts has been doing in, for the clinical environment. So again, another really great collaboration. Um, so scripts assessment will be led by Bill Hauser from BMS and uh, Kevin Snyder from the FDA. So two really um, useful projects for finding value beyond just that submission data set uh, for those for those investments in the effort to do that electronic submission. Um, the next two projects, um, again, sort of some extensions of analysis, uh, visualization of group differences in histopathology data. That was a big project for us coming into the 2016 CSS. They're very close to publishing their white paper um, on exploring the best way to graphically display um, data, histopathology specifically in this case, to identify and communicate group differences, patterns in response, and phenotypic expression. Um, during the CSS, they were um, really seeing that this cross-domain, multi-study analysis, different data types are all still very interesting. So um, they will continue to go forward. And there's interest uh, from Bill, Phil Drew, and Sri Raya Parapu, as well as Laura Kaufman, to go forward with uh, Move with more publication on um, visualization of data uh, for non-clinical assessment. And then the last project, investigating endpoint modeling. This one's near closing. <clears throat> they came into the CSS 2016 with uh, very, <clears throat> excuse me, um, close to their white paper, um, exploring modeling of biomarkers, ADA data, immunophenotyping data. We're getting a lot of question about toxicology studies which have these endpoints and how to model that. Do they fit in the existing LB domain or do they need new domains? And this group is very close to publishing their recommendation on when custom domains are needed or when existing domains can and should be used uh, for submitting this type of data. So Mike Wasco from PDS and Deborah Osman from INSEM have been ably leading that already for the year and they're bringing that topic home um, in the next few months. So that's a very quick overview of all of our projects. You have links here in this presentation to their wiki sites and also um, all the co-leads. Um, we really welcome any, any additional or new participation. That would be great. Um, and overall, you know, at the end of the last day of the CSS, I really wish that I had tweeted so it could be up on the, on the uh, on the screen over top of the last day that the non-clinical working group really rocked this year. And um, you can see that the word cloud uh, for us um, is big about the, the co-lead partnerships that we have um, that really drive our projects forward. Um, you know, non-clinical data is our fo focus and SEND is a big, big part of that. Um, it has been for the past few years and, and that continues. And uh, we're, we're really very interested in partnering with not only the regulatory agencies, but also uh, with our vendors, with each other, uh, to solve our data challenges. So um, as I do in every webinar, I'm reaching out to everyone to, you know, please join us um, and, uh, and help moving us forward. We're very interested in moving toward 
the, transla the translational data management space. And um, so even if you're clinical, if you're in research, um, it would be, uh, your ideas are greatly, greatly appreciated. So with that, I will hand it over to Jane. Um, Thank you. You're welcome. Let you go forward. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity to summarize the projects that we talked about within the Optimizing the Use of Data Standards Working Group. There's two leads for this. DJ Shahatri is the main lead from Gilead. And then myself, Jane Lozano from Eli Lilly. DJ is closing on his house today and asked me to give a summary of our projects. So I only have a couple slides, but I will go through each of the projects. The first one is standards implementation nuances. We had a couple really great brainstorming sessions at FUSE to talk about standards and implementation of these standards. There's many, there's several versions of SDTM, of the model, of the IG. How do you implement something from one IG into another? How do you work with standards when FDA Jumpstart program is telling us that we need a variable in SDTM, but the IG isn't very explicit about that. And it was just a really, really good session that we had. There was a project that has been approved by the CSS Steering Committee. It's an SDTM and ADAM implementation project. It's an FAQ. And my understanding is that it's similar to what has been done with non-clinical. And this is a joint effort between CDISC and FUSE, and also non-clinical will collaborate with us on that, which will be wonderful, and give, share their learnings with us as we do this. We are recruiting members. At CDISC has a co-lead from the FUSE side. We don't yet, and we are also recruiting members for this project. The next project is Define 2.0 Implementation and Style Sheet Recommendations. That one is ongoing, and they actually identified two projects, and they're trying to determine who's going to co-lead those. They want to produce a completion guidelines document, and they, have, they do have a working group lead for that, and then style sheet recommendations, and they are working on the clarification of the scope by that team. The next one is a study data standardization plan. That one is mine. And we have been working on this one for two years now. And at the conference, or at the symposium, we had some outstanding questions that we needed to be answered and have some input on from FDA and also from non-clinical. So I had the pleasure of going in and talking to non-clinical folks because this does cover clinical and non-clinical. This document is something that will be used to discuss standards early on, very, very early. FDA has clearly stated they want to talk about standards early because if it's too late, it's way too late. They want to know what our exchange standards are, what our terminology standards are, and have that agreed upon as early as possible so that you don't run into a situation where we have to upversion because we didn't have the discussion and we could have gotten a waiver. And, but no, we spent a lot of money to upversion. And having those discussions, though, is, is very important. And we have four deliverables that came out of that. We have completion guidelines and two example documents, the template, and then also a sponsor implementation guide that will aid sponsors or CROs or other organizations on how to implement this plan. The, the deliverables have been sent to FDA, and they are actually getting ready to send this out for review. I think, Scott, we have to figure out where it's going to go and have those discussions with FDA, but they are getting ready to send that out, which is very exciting for me. It's, it's wonderful to see something, a completion. And it's a gift based on Crystal's presentation at FUSE. She looks, up, she looks at FUSE deliverables as a gift, which I, I thought was really nice because we are working towards making things better, doing what we can to help FDA to help pharma. 
the next second page down. I don't know why I can't page down. There we go. There we go. The next project is the Legacy Data Conversion Plan and Report. That is also one that I am leading. And in the Technical Conformance Guide, it talks about legacy data and it also talks about a conversion plan and report that is going to be part of the Study Data Reviewer's Guide template. I've been working on this for the last couple of years as well. We kind of went into a holding pattern last you know, a few months ago in trying to decide what, what happens with that. But now we have that clear direction that it is part of the SDRG. And the template is available out on the wiki. So all you have to do is search Legacy Data Conversion Plan, and you can find what the template is on, on the wiki. We also have to update the SDRG completion guidelines and example document, and we are meeting every two weeks, and I do have co lead and we are <clears throat> going to start working on that. Hopefully by October, we should be able to have a good draft of the completion guidelines and example document. The next project is the Reviewer's Guide and Define XML, and they want to actually have a white paper targeted for this year. And they went through notes and questions over the last year. They've been working on this one for a while, too. But their hope is to have that done this year. And the last project is standardizing data within the inspection site selection process. And they had working group sessions as well, and they want to pose a post to the wiki there as you can see their recommendations this year and that also is mentioned that the standard scripts group standard scripts group might be interested in working with them so I think we all touch each other at some way we uh, definitely work with the non-clinical and now the standard scripts group and that's one thing that is wonderful about fuse and the working groups is that we all work together on our projects to make sure they, they get done and they get done right. And that was my last slide, Scott. I only had two. If you want to pass it back over to me, Jane, um, and then sure. we can, I can present the slides for Emerging Trends and Technologies, and I believe Ian Fleming is here to actually talk to those slides. Okay. I have to figure out now how to, uh, how to do this. Because I don't see. If, see. if you just make me the presenter, I can. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm trying. Now I'm trying to do that. That's okay. But I'm not. Well, I'm not. I don't see what I don't see what I had before on doing that. Is there? What am I? I'm missing something. You see the orange arrow? Do you need to click the orange arrow to get the side screen back? This. There we go. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, so you should be able to see the emerging trends and technology slides. Is that correct? Yes. And Ian, are you on? And yeah, I am here. Yep. If you want to just tell me when to advance, um, I, I will. Okay. Uh, so I'm uh, I co-lead the emerging trends and technologies working group with Jeff Lowe. Uh, Jeff is usually the one who does the webinars, but he was uh, uh, busy today, so I'm the one who's going to be doing it today as well. Uh, you can see here the five working groups that we actually had at the CSS, um, and I'll go through each one of these, not in extreme detail, but uh, enough with we'll leave Scott with three to five minutes at the end to uh, address some, some topics, so I'll be doing this for about five minutes. So, Scott, next slide. Okay, so the first one is the Alternative Transport Formats Working Group. This is a fairly new working group. It's co-led by uh, Jeff Lowe and Amy Klopman. Uh, and the, uh, the idea of this group is to actually start exploring some alternative uh, transport formats uh, you know, for submissions to the FDA. Uh, we did have good participation at the CSS between industry people and uh, the FDA. Uh, and the work that was achieved was they actually started looking at a set of criteria for evaluating different transport formats. Um, I don't think we wanted it to be the kind of thing where we just selected one and went with that one. They wanted to take a little bit more of a structured approach uh, to kind of come up with various criteria to evaluate a lot of these different formats uh, and then try to look at a bunch of different ones to see which one maybe uh, fit the, both of those criteria. 
Um, there is a, a, a ongoing discussion in this group around um, transport versus content. Um, I think uh, anybody who's been involved with a lot of this in the past knows that um, the transport format is just one thing. It's just the technical representation of the information. Uh, but the content is an issue that um, the FDA has been concerned about in the past and making sure the content is robust enough for them to be able to do what they need to do to evaluate, um, you know, submissions. So that was an ongoing discussion at the, uh, at the CSS. This group is going to continue to finalize those evaluation criteria um, and to, once they have those actually, those, those criteria kind of finalized, to actually send out a survey to people to have them uh, uh, kind of vote on these so that they can prioritize them uh, amongst the whole set that they have. And then also release a white paper on evaluating the existing and new transport formats. Uh, currently, uh, the criteria are nearly final and they have enumerated a lot of the issues that exist currently with XPT, uh, the current transport format. Uh, and they'll continue to do that work. Scott, next slide. So we're going from our newest group to our oldest group. The cloud adoption group has been around for a number of years. Uh, this is led by uh, Tony Hewer and uh, Anders Bidstrup. And uh, they've, uh, I think they're the only group, the Emerging Trends and Technologies Working Group that has consistently been at the CSS and uh, continue just to hammer out good work. Um, they have a currently existing framework document uh, that they are uh, currently discussing. They're, uh, they're modifying it uh, as they go, and they do this every year at the CSS. Um, there's a number of questions posed by the EMA, EME, sorry, the EMA that were uh, discussed also at the, uh, the CSS. Uh, and then also they, uh, they define a path for expansion and socialization of the existing framework uh, to make sure that the, the work that they've done to this point and the framework that they've developed, uh, that they can actually uh, get that out into the community so people can start absorbing it and using it uh, in anger. So um, some targets that they actually have is to update that existing framework with, uh, to include an auditor section to, to help auditors and people who are uh, you know, being audited with uh, cloud adoption technologies and the issues around uh, cloud uh, representing information in the cloud and how to deal with that. Also uh, incorporating data location. I believe that this one is a uh, result of the uh, safe harbor that came out of the EU uh, to uh, put some information into the document regarding some of that data location. Uh, develop a Q&B section. I think that's supposed to say Q&A. Um, I'm not sure what Q&B is, uh, but a Q&A section for people to kind of go in if they have questions uh, around some of this cloud technology, um, hopefully that they can get some of the answers they need there. Uh, some ongoing work uh, is that they are actually submitting a paper to the FUSE Annual Conference in Barcelona in October. Uh, and then hopefully if that gets uh, uh, you know, adopted and approved, that uh, they can present something interesting at the, uh, at the conference around the CSS uh, working group there. Next one, Scott. The data transparency working group. This one is not typically, this is actually a separate, uh, a separate working group altogether. They aren't actually under the umbrella of emerging trends and technologies, but we decided to actually uh, have them, uh, uh, we adopted them a little bit in our group so that they could have a place uh, to discuss things uh, at the CSS. This is a group that's led by John Mark Ferran uh, in the EU. Um, and uh, we actually just allowed them space in our registered technologies working group to have their discussions. Uh, they reviewed EMA, EMA policy uh, 70, which is a new data transparency um, policy coming out of the EU regarding the anonymization of uh, CSRs, uh, and so that's something that they wanted to discuss and uh, come up with a plan for with the uh, in their working group. They also discussed some de-identification scenarios for Adam uh, the, regarding extreme values or imputed dates. Uh, their target upcoming is that they're going to have some blog posts on that Policy 70 document. Um, they also have a number of people who have downloaded the, uh, the the current data transparency work that the, the working group has already done. And they want to have a questionnaire after all those people who downloaded the material so that they can get a little, bit in for it, a little bit more information about what those people are using this for um, and how useful they found the document to see uh, if there's any changes that they could make uh, in the future for some of this stuff. And then also based on that Adam the Identification Scenario work to release that uh, guidance for public review. Next slide, Scott. Sorry. Data visualizations. This working group has gone undergone a little bit of a, a refactoring in the few in the past uh, months uh, before the CSS. At the CSS was the uh, initial the meeting of a, the newest incarnation of this. 
It has uh, three co-leads by Michael Rubison, Mary Bannock, and uh, Carolyn Kracht. And what they wanted to do was actually have some discussions about the future of the group and what they what the refocus was uh, going to going to focus on. I think they initially discussed uh, having it be based on risk-based monitoring, but they also uh, expanded it a little bit through some other uh, some other items around the implementations of data visualizations, some safety graphics, some standard safety graphics, some technology comparisons, um, and interactive versus static visualizations. And I think a lot of this stuff is going to be probably done in somewhat in conjunction with some of the standard scripts group working group, especially around the safety graphics bit, um, and making sure that they're aligned there is going to be pretty important in the future. Uh, and I think some of these other ones around technology comparisons and interactive versus static visualizations is going to be uh, where they'll probably put out some white papers and some guidelines um, around uh, some best practices for some of these things. Mm -hmm. And the status of this is they've actually submitted the new uh, their, their new scope to the steering committee for review, and it is currently under review by the steering committee. Next slide, Scott. The last one is statistical computing environments. Uh, this is led by... Uh, Art Collins, Mark Matthews, Steve Matheson, and uh, Nigel Montgomery. Um, they also did a little bit of refactoring at the uh, the CSS because I think they uh, they you know realized that maybe they weren't uh, getting the most out of what they needed uh, previously, so they started to kind of refocus what they were doing at the CSS. They developed the framework for describing user requirements for a statistical computing environment, and you can see some of the groupings that they created there based on uh, their discussions. They did create a, a draft list of requirements within this framework. Um, <clears throat> and then I think what they'd like to do a little bit further, uh, you know, the targets for the future is that they're going to continue to work on not just the requirements, but the, the framework for how they're actually evaluating or developing some of this work around SCEs. Um, they're actually going to send out something to request user requirements uh, from the industry. So if industry has ever developed user requirements for some of this stuff, then they'd like to have some of those. Uh, best practices for, uh, you know, as a precursor to some of the user requirements, visual representation of SCC so they could clearly define their scope. And then once they're done, they actually want to uh, publish those user requirements for public comment and review. And currently what they're doing is they are discussing their, their second phase beyond this user requirements and their plans for moving forward beyond that stage. Uh, I think that's it for me, Scott. So back to you. Okay. Th Great. Thank you so much, Ian. So I am... Um conscious that we are within a couple minutes of the top of the hour. So I am just going to kind of ad-lib here and um, address a few of the questions we received and kind of set the stage for the next webinar in May. So we did receive a question about uh, where you can find the Jumpstart scripts in the FUSE uh, code repository. So if you come to the FUSE website, uh, www.fuse.eu, and you go to the FUSE code repository, you will see a link right here to the Jumpstart scripts that are, are available as part of the repository, as well as an index of all of the different content that is available uh, within the, the uh, Fuse code repository that Mary talked to in her presentation about uh, the standard scripts working group. We also had another question related to how can you get involved in uh, one of the projects that are uh, occurring within the CS collaboration. So if you go again to the FUSE website and you click CS Working Groups, we have a dashboard set up that lists all of the active projects that are occurring, most of which you've heard about today. There are a few new ones that will be coming as uh, some of the working group co-leads mentioned. But we have a dashboard set up for each of the, the different working groups. And with, right under the working group name, you'll find uh, the contact information for the working group co-lead. So if I was interested in, in uh, what was going on or joining the optimizing the use of data standards working group, I could click this link and nobody wants to see my email, so I won't do that. But you could see, uh, you could actually contact the working group. And if you're actually interested in a specific project, uh, like uh, Jane had talked about the study data standardization plan, I can get a brief description of the project here and then click that link and it would actually take me to the FUSE wiki which has more information about the projects as well as the, the co-leads for those projects so I could actually follow up with a project directly in that regard. So I wanted to wrap the presentation briefly by saying there are um, additional FUSE events that you can get involved in. We have some single day events coming up. And again, if you go to the FUSE website, you can see a list of all of the single day events. There are two coming up in May, one in Cambridge in the UK that I believe is focused on metadata and one in Frankfurt, Germany, 
which is focused on project quality and efficiency. And again, these events are free to all FUSE members. And then finally, and I'll leave uh, you on this note, um, we are actually running, as I mentioned earlier, a CSS for the first time in Europe. It will be um, at uh, the Novartis campus in lovely Basel, Switzerland. Registration is now open. So again, if you come to the FUSE website, click CSS conference, the, the splash page will give you the registration information as well as some additional information about the projects that will be uh, at the European CSS. Again, what you see is June 21st and 22nd in Basel, Switzerland. This event is free to all FUSE members. Um, and uh, we are limited to approximately 100 to 120 attendees. Uh, we have probably 60 to 70 signed up now. So if you are interested, in attending this event, I would suggest that you register now before uh, you lose your slot. And then finally, I will just leave on this note that we are actually having another webinar in uh, late May, and that webinar will actually focus on what will be happening on at the European CSS. So similar today, where you had uh, leaders, uh, co-leads from each of the working groups discussing what occurred at the 2016 CSS. In May, the webinar will focus on what will be occurring at the European CSS, and there are uh, some additional details about the different projects that will be running. So on that note, I just want to thank you for your time uh, with uh, on this webinar, and we'll look forward to uh, seeing you uh, again in May. So thank you, everyone.